Okay, it's time for another exciting video on magnetic bubble memory. I'm going to demo uh, several different boards. A couple boards I'm just going to show off but not demo. A couple boards I will demo. Starting here with this one, this is the double bubble. So in my previous video I did a single bubble memory for the Heathkit H8. Kind of was this board from, from you know, here over. And uh, I now have the double bubble. Then what we're really going to talk about uh, for a bit today is this bubble single board computer. I spent a bit of time thinking about what is sort of the minimum demonstrable unit I could have of a bubble memory subsystem to make use of these uh, bubble memory parts. And I thought, well, I'll take a bubble memory and I'll hook it up to a CPU and some RAM and we'll run RC2014 BASIC on it. So right there, bubble single board computer. And yep, you've got it right. I did say RC2014. So this video represents my return to RC2014 projects with not one, but two RC2014 boards. So I'll talk a little bit about this one here, which is the bubble card for the RC2014. Basically the same circuit I will show you in the single board computer and the same circuit I showed you last time with the, uh, with the H8, but now on the RC2014 bus, so you can plug it into your RC2014 computer. This little guy here is a SCC serial card for the RC2014. While doing my Z8000 work, I realized how much more I like the SCC than the SIO. Certainly better than an ACIA. Um, so I made one of those for the RC2014 too. Okay, what is magnetic bubble memory? Well, I'm not going to say a whole lot about that because I already covered in a previous video. And I had got my daughter's marble run out and I simulated magnetic bubbles with marbles and moved them around and acted like we were reading and writing them. And I pointed you to Craig Andrews' videos which go into a lot more depth uh, than mine and do a really good job of explaining it. So there's all kinds of resources to learn what magnetic bubble memory is. So suffice it to say, for the purposes of this video, it is an early uh, solid state storage technology that relied on magnetic bubble domains, you know, little domains of magnetic flux. Inside this package here, this is a one megabit or 128 kilobit uh, bubble memory package. It had those little magnetic domains in there and it could move those around in a loop and read and write them. And this thing would persist when the power was turned back off. So back when you were stuck with uh, floppy drives that had motors and spinning platters, you could have had one of these, which is entirely solid state with no moving parts. And that would be great in a, in a variety of settings, you know, for, for speed as well as for resistance to industrial machinery and, you know, sources of vibration that could damage uh, something like a floppy drive. So very reliable storage media. So anyway, like I said, previous video, we'll talk about that. For now, let's go on with showing off these projects. Okay, here is the double bubble board. So in the previous uh, H8 video, I would showed you the single bubble board, which is basically this board minus those parts. And this was a single bubble memory. You add a second one and you will get a storage system that is not only twice as big, but it's also twice as fast. Now, I'm not going to go through the schematic differences to do this because you can read about it in the uh, Bubble Memory Design Handbook. And basically what you do is you lay out the second circuit exactly the same as the first, minus the controller chip. One controller can control up to eight bubble memories. You hook most of it into parallel. But there's one signal in here that is a serial output. It's called like sync out. And this one goes into this one sync in. Now, if you wanted to go to four bubble memories, your sync out here would go to the next guy's sync in to the next. You can do that all the way up to eight bubble memories. Now, as I said, every time you double the number of memories, you also double the speed that this thing operates at. And this actually got somewhat taxing for my H8 because my H8 is a two megahertz computer. Now, thanks to Norberto Collado and his Z80 board, I can get up to eight megahertz. With my own 8085 board, I can get up to six megahertz. But you really have to go to that six or eight megahertz to start using two of these bubble memories in pulled mode. It gets a little bit more taxing on resources, a little bit more work to do that. I will probably stick with just running one bubble memory and not having the... CPU requirements that you get from two or more. Now, I'm not going to demo this board because if I ran the demo, it would look exactly like the previous H8 demo. It would just run faster and it would have a bigger disk. Now, while on the subject of multiple bubble memory systems, take a look at this. This is something I picked on up on eBay. This is a DEC Cubus card made by Bubble Tech. 
containing uh, two bubble memories with slots to add two more. So, you know, these were used as, as products back in the day. And uh, this is an example of one such product. So this would have been uh, a two bubble. You could have expanded it to a four bubble. You'd put this in your deck, your, I guess, a PDP-11 maybe. This is before my time, but you'd put it in there, your Cubus based uh, deck computer, and you would have a solid state drive back in the um, late 70s, early 80s in SSD. How cool would that be? Anyway, I'm not going to do anything with this because I don't even have a computer that this thing plugs into. Okay, here's my single board bubble basic computer. So all of this stuff from here on over is pretty much the bubble related stuff. And I've already gone over that in, in more detail in a previous video, my H8 video, which I'll put a link here in this video so you can go watch it. But basically the important bit of it here is the 7110AZ bubble memory module. So anyway, we've got the bubble memory module, but we've got all of its support chips surround it. So the big chip is the controller. This is what the CPU can talk to and it will, you know, at a high level, like, like the level of a floppy controller, basically, you'll, you'll issue commands to it to read and write sectors off of this bubble memory. And it talks to uh, some part or sends amplifier to read stuff and this uh, formatter chip to handle all of the synchronizing and such. Um, and also some driver chips up here and a pre-driver. Pre all of that goes into making that bubble memory work and doing the synchronization stuff that it requires. It has its own crystal for that. That's this crystal here and a clock divider for that. Lots and lots of capacitors around it because you want the power to be very clean going into this. Very, very delicate um, sensing and such on the um, reading the bubble status and on driving the bubble chip and all of that. So anyway, like I say, most of that's in the previous video. You can watch my video. You could watch uh, Craig's video, the SBC85 guy, watch his video. So what's new here is on this side over, and that is the single board computer uh, part of this. So if you've been following single board computers for the past oh, five to seven years, you've heard of the RC2014. And before that, you've heard of Grant Searle's uh, basic computer and Grant Searle's CPM computer. So this is all derived from that same work. So what you've got is you've got a Zilog Z80 CPU as well as its associated crystal. You've got a 62256 uh, RAM chip which that gives you 32 kilobytes of RAM. You've got an EEPROM here. I went out of my way to get the old school one with the window that is UV erasable because sort of period accuracy it wouldn't really make sense to be doing a bubble memory board and then have a fancy electronically erasable EEPROM or a flash or something. We'll go with the old school UV one that you have to actually stick a UV light on it for a while to erase it. But that, that holds your program. This is actually a 64K chip. I only use 32K out of it. And then you have your serial controller. Now I designed this so you can take two different chips. Let me pull this out of there. You see there's actually two sets of sockets. So if you want to use a Z80 SIO, you put it over here on the right. If you want to use a Z80 SCC, um, you put it over here to the left. So the one I am using in this board is an SCC. Now the SCC and the SIO are two very similar chips. I, for a long time, was very happy with the SIO. It was a dual port uh, serial serial chip so you see there's actually two headers out here to go to your FTDI cables. Uh, so the SIO it pairs very nicely with the with the Z80 but then when I was doing my Z8000 projects I stumbled onto the SCC and the SCC programs much similar to the SIO except that the SCC includes baud rate generator. Now most of the Grant Searle or the RC2014 designs will come across will be fixed at like 115,200 baud and that's because you take a 7.3728 megahertz crystal and you divide it by the divisors supported in your 6850 or your SIO. It's either a 64 divisor or a 32 divisor. You get 115,200. Now I find it's, it's very convenient especially if you want to hook this up to a vintage terminal or something to have like 9600 baud or 2400 baud. So a baud rate generator, sort of a programmable divider can be very useful. Saves you having to implement it with additional circuits. So that's that's what we have here built into the SCC. Under software commands, we can change the baud rate. And that's why I am starting to revamp my designs to have either an SIO or an SCC. And in this case, I'm using the SCC. 
not as common, not as many people have them, but I think, you know, the whole RC2014 community could benefit from using those SCCs. Finally, we have a socket here for a Max uh, 232 or Max 202, I forget which one I use, very similar chips, but to do the serial driving. And then we have a DB25. Now, even though we only use like four pins on the DB25, for the period, I like having the 25 pin connector because that is what your computer would have had in that time period. So there you have it. I mean, we really just have the simple RC2014 style or Searle style um, single board computer running basic with 32K of ROM, 32K of RAM, glued to these peripherals over here with the Intel bubble module. Uh, we've got some LEDs. Blue LED is going to be activity on the bubble module. Red LED, t LED is going to be an activity light that we can change from basic. There is a programmable logic device right there that is a glue between the single board computer side and the magnetic storage peripheral side. Now the other thing to talk about is power handling with this. This um, the, the bubble memory system requires 12 volts. Lots of different options for getting that. You could use a step up from 5 to 12. You could put in 18 volts and regulate it down to 12. So there you see I've got a footprint for a regulator if you wanted to do that. I've got footprints for the step up modules there if you wanted to do that. Um, lots of different ways to get your 12 volt. What I opted with doing is just give the board 12 volt. So 12 volt comes in, I jump her across the regulator. We've got 12 volt for this. Um, make sure you use a good cable if you're doing that because you don't want voltage drop in your cable. Use thin wires to put in this 12 volt. You could have 11.5 volts here instead of 12. I actually measured out at about 11.88, which is good enough to run the bubble memory system. So you've got your 12, then you need your five. So what I have here is a Polaloo uh, five volt regulator. So we take the 12, we just step it down to five volt. I've got the footprint here for 7805. You could use the 7805 if you wanted to with the heat sink probably. Um, but the switching regulator is it runs cooler, runs more efficient, why not use a switching regulator? Then you've got two LEDs to show you the status of the uh, 5 volt and the 12 volt to let you know everything's healthy. So there it is and you know I've mounted it in, um, I designed a 3D case for it, it's actually a variant of one of my other cases. We've actually got some plastic blocks that go in. I've misplaced one of them around here someplace but you know it snaps together um, you know, kind of like so. I wish I had the other piece, but there's another black piece to go over the back. Then you've got your, you know, your DB25 for your serial. A couple spots here if you want to use FTDI cable. Spot for your power going in that side. Simple enough. Okay, now as promised at the beginning of the video, this is going to be my return to the world of the RC2014. So over here I have my original RC2014 kit, the one I bought off of Tindy like back in 2015 or 2016 or whatever, whenever I got into this. It was quite a long time ago and I had a whole bunch of boards that I designed for it once I bought this and this kind of kicked off my whole modern um, history with retro computing and vintage computing was the, the very kit that I bought off of Tindy and this is, this is it. I mean this is, you know, this is none of my special boards. This is the original one um, that I assembled from that kit. It's got the clock generator board, uh, this little guy here, it's got the uh, ROM board, the RAM board, uh, the Z80 CPU board, down here is the uh, ACIA serial board, the original RC2014 kit that I have, I have kept it intact all of these years. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mod it to use bubble memory. So the first thing that I have to kind of disclose is that I modified one of the boards right here. This board here is the ROM board and what I did is I modified it because my bubble basic requires more than 8k and this board was only designed to serve 8k so I took and I yanked out one of the jumpers for an address line and you can see a little yellow wire I wire that um, I wire that down to one of the address pins and I also I kinda messed over here with some of the pins on this uh, on this uh, logic gate here. So I modified this so that instead of eight banks of 8K, it's got four banks of 16K. And um, we can use that to hold our bubble basic. Other than that, every single part of this kit is the same. Now over here, 
We've got the bubble module. Let me move it front and center. And this is really identical uh, to the bubble basic board. I mean, if you could take my, my single board com bubble basic computer and just add in the, um, there. I mean, it's, it's just like that. I mean, it's just like that. It's just like you chopped it off there and extracted the bubble parts and got rid of the, the, the CPU and single board computer. So we've got the RC2014 bus. We've got the uh, 7110AZ-1 bubble memory, its controller, its driver transistors, you know, all of that stuff, a whole plethora of capacitors running around, a five volt regulator, just like the single board computer, the 12 volt jack, you know, it's, it's, it's exactly the same, except I hacked off the single board computer part and put it on an RC2014 bus. Now, um, one difference, I, just, I know I just said it's exactly the same, but there's one difference, and that is this inductor here. If you read the, um, the bubble memory design guidebook, you want to make sure that when this thing powers down, all of the juice doesn't run out and try to power the rest of the computer because this thing has to be shut down in an orderly manner. There's actually a little curve that tells how fast your five volt can decline. And one of the things they said is put some big capacitors and a decent sized inductor. So this inductor kind of keeps all the electrons so they can't just flee and run out the bus and not have the power to shut down the, um, the, uh, the bubble memory subsystem. So, so I added this inductor. It's not as big an inductor as they wanted but you know, it's what I had, what I could fit on there. But that's not all. So while I was doing this, I said, you know, I like this uh, SCC chip. You know, you heard me rave about the SCC chip earlier in the video about how it has the built-in baud rate generator and I just love that feature. I made an RC2014 board with the SCC chip. So if we want, you know, we could swap out the ACIA for an SCC. You know, I can use this with my CPM uh, with my CPM RC2014 computers, I could use it with my basic RC2014 computer. Um, I will put up, you know, the circuit design and the Gerbers and such for this SCC uh, serial board for the RC2014 in case anyone wants to build one of these. Okay, it's demo time. I've got the basic bubble computer sitting here. The serial port is actually hooked up to an FTDI cable. It comes out here via the side exit from that port there. We went TTL level rather than using the DB25, even though I put the DB25 in there for nostalgia. It's kind of convenient to do it this way. It's all sitting here ready to go. Now let me go ahead and I'll turn it on. Okay, there we go. So it booted up and it's got a help command. Uh, so this is uh, RC2014 basic, also based on Grant Searle's basic, based on um, NASCOM's basic, which was originally Microsoft's basic. So I've added some commands to it. So we do help, we can see the commands I added. Uh, the first one I'll show off is the about command. Now, just the way I refactored the drivers, it was convenient to move um, some of this banner stuff that was up in front, you know, like who wrote the the drivers and who wrote the development kit. Let's take that stuff off of the front where I don't have the baud rate set yet and move it later um, after the baud rate is set. So it's, it's kind of here in an about command to get that additional info. Now the other info on help, um, we've got some other commands here. Let me try lead on. Turns on the red lead. Lead off. Turns it off. Uh, pretty pretty simple there. Um, now we've got our uh, bubble commands. Most of those start with a B. So if we do B test, that is our bubble tester. And this is a destructive test that will write all pages. Um, and it'll just sit there and write. It'll write them all and then read them back and make sure it works. The blue light there, so you notice the red light was the one I could control. The blue light is the one that is just activity. That just shows the bubble memory is operating. Um, let's go ahead and reset. So as I said, that, that is a destructive test. It destroyed everything that was in memory. Um, list here, you know, this is just RAM. There's nothing here, but if we do print, can print uh, Scott was here, 20 go to 10. Then I'm gonna be save this. So I wrote a save and a load command. They just take an integer and it can, it can store exactly four programs. Each program is up to 32K in size, 128 kilobyte uh, bubble memory. So four programs into the bubble memory. So we'll save that into slot zero. Um, now let me reboot the computer. 
Okay, and let me do a B load. And I typed it wrong. Let me do a B load on program zero. Now it's there. Scott was here, yep. And um, by default, if you reboot it, doesn't auto load or anything, but if I do a B auto, program zero, now it's set to auto load. If I reboot, there my program runs on, uh, on boot. And no auto zero, turn program. B, it's just no auto. B, no auto. Uh, that turns auto boot back off. So the auto boot is useful if you wanted something that was just to be like a demo that every time you turn it on, it runs the, the initial program. You could put a menu in there even. Um, you can make it start up a basic program on restart. So I've got a series of RC2016 programs here. Um, let's just try typing some of those in. So let's do new. And this first one here is mastermind. Now I do have a delay set here when it's pasting these um, these lines into the shell program because I don't have flow control set up and we'd, we'd overflow the serial buffers. We'll be save this one into one. And then let's go in here. Star Trek. Let's again clear a buffer. Come on. Take a little while to paste Star Trek. We'll be save that one in slot two. You can see it take, took a little while to write that. And then this next one is a game called Quest. And we'll save that one into slot three. Now let's uh, clear. Nothing here. No tricks being played. Uh, below zero. B load one. X and Y, three and five, three five one one. So maybe this is like between the, the high and the low. So zero and a hundred. Five. Seventy. I don't know. I don't know how to play Mastermind, whatever variant of Mastermind, but this is this is it. This is Mastermind. Okay, let's load uh, program number two. Fix that, B load number two. It's Star Trek. Yes, we'll accept command. Shield's dangerously low, uh-oh. We better get out of here. XXX, uh, nay. And then B load three. This one will be quest. Uh, south. Okay, yeah. Your typical adventure game. Bye. Q. Uh, control C. That'll exit. Uh, so anyway, you know, there's we're able to to save and load our our four programs. Let's see if I had anything else in here. I also have a baud rate command. Because we use that SCC chip, it has a built-in baud rate generator. So I could do baud, um, let's do 2400 baud. And then I'm gonna update my terminal here, serial 2400. And uh, let's reset. There we are, 2400 baud. And uh, I had to fit the baud rate in, in a 16-bit signed integer. So rather than 115200, it's just 11520. So baud 11520, option session 115200. Yep, there we are, 115200 baud. Okay, so that is the single board basic bubble computer. Okay, now it's time to do all of this again on the RC2014. So here we have my original RC2014 computer with its Z80 CPU, its ACIA serial port, all that good stuff. Um, we'll plug in the bubble board right there.
And then we'll plug in the FTDI cable back here. Up a little bit higher. And then we can take and we can, what I do with the power cable, plug in the power cable over here. Okay, it's demo time again. Let's turn them on. There we go. Okay, so we just turned on the RC2014. I'm powering it through the bubble board so we see both of the bubble board's power lights lit up, the two green ones. And it's just exactly like we did here with the, um, with, with the single board computer. I'll do a B test. There we go, our bubble memory is working. Um, where's my reset button? There we go. And then we can do, uh, we'll enter a program 10, print Scott. Ah, Scott was here. Go to 10, save him to slot zero. Reboot him. Nothing there. B load from slot zero. There's our program. Working as expected. Automatically run him. Reboot. Auto runs just as expected. Uh, be no auto. There we go. Auto boot turned back off. So I'm not going to go through the exercise of running basic and all of those on here. Um, it would work exactly the same as it did with a single board computer. The only thing is the baud rate command, if we change this, um, let's change it to 2400. It says it'll take effect, but it doesn't actually do anything. And the reason being we're using the ACIA that came with the original um, RC2014. doesn't have a baud rate generator uh, built into it. Now if I was to use my SCC board, um, I would be able to do the baud rate settings on the RC2014. But I'm not going to take the time to pull it out and plug that in. I'm going to assume you guys can extrapolate that it would have worked just like it did in the single board computer. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed these bubble projects. I will put up the Gerbers and such for the bubble board and the SCC board. Uh, bubbles are kind of hard to get, but if you manage to get one and you want to build one of these, you certainly, uh, I'll have all the materials up so you can do it. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.